Hey there everyone, Hathesh here, back again with another video and welcome back to the Linux series. And uh, let's move forward. So in the last video, we learned how to install a Linux onto a virtual machine and the process is almost exactly same for Ubuntu, any other Debian flavor, most of the Red Hat flavors as well. So, but the most important part about it is the partition. We actually skipped through over that part. I discussed only a little bit details about these partition. So now we're gonna understand that in a much more detail. Again, remember, I understand totally that you don't like theories much, but in Linux, if you're just walking through, just breezing through by click, click next, there is no point of understanding the Linux. So the whole idea is to understand the bits and pieces and in-depth detail so that you understand your system better than anybody else. So with that, let's move forward and try to understand what the partitions are. And before that, I would like to ask a question. So how many partitions you have seen maximum in a device, uh, maybe a computer of Windows XP or maybe Windows 7 or Windows 10 or a Macintosh, whatever that is, how many partitions maximum you have seen? A lot of you might be commenting down in the comment section below, I have seen five, I have seen 10, I have seen 11 and a whole lot of crazy numbers. But do you actually know that the partition, you can only make like four partitions in your drive? And yes, I do agree with your point that I, you have seen five and six and eight. So what is the logic behind it and how the partition actually works? So let's go ahead and move forward into that. So first and foremost, we're gonna talk about formatting because before even the partitions are done, there is one concept known as formatting that is being done. And there are two kinds of formatting that are that we do have. The one is known as physical formatting, also known as low level formatting, and another one is high level formatting. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. First, let's talk about this physical formatting. So what is this physical formatting? Now this physical formatting actually simply means that we want to create in our hard disk the sectors, the tracks, and the cylinder. You might have studied this in your early days that a hard disk consists of a variety of sectors and these sectors are further uh, into tracks and these tracks are further divided into sectors. And we do that exactly same thing in the physical formatting. Now onto a hard disk, uh, which is completely solid, how do we create actually these uh, tracks and sectors? These are not actually done by somebody chiseling with the hammer down. No, it's not done by that. It's done using, using the magnetic fields. And the magnetic fields does some polarization through which sectors uh, are being created and these sectors can be further used to store information. And remember, these sectors are just blank space being polarized through magnetic fields and uh, they are just ready to accept any kind of data. And this physical formatting, most important thing about is, is totally independent of the operating system. So regardless, you want to install a Windows XP or you want to install a Linux into that, this physical formatting is totally independent dependent of that. Now what is dependent on to your operating system is logical formatting and also known as high level formatting. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this logical formatting as well. So what does this logical formatting does for you? Now this logical format has variety of steps and variety of uh, responsibilities to take care. Things like a uh, process of writing the sectors is actually being done in here. Also, how you're gonna store your partition table, how you're gonna write that, that also is done here. Apart from that, your sector size and positions are also uh, done through this uh, logical formatting. And yes, this one is actually dependent on the operating system. So how you want to write your partition table is actually done in the logical step. And that's how that it is gone. Now, formatting, uh, is, uh, again, remember these are of two types. Now, one more thing, formatting is actually a little bit different than uh, creating the partitions in that. And uh, we have three types of things in the partition. Uh, these are known as your primary partition, your extended partitions, and logical drive. And there are certain rules that you need to understand. Again, these rules are uh, can be fooled into computer through a variety of ways, but let's not talk about those extreme cases. Let's talk about the general stuff which goes into that. So uh, in the initial days, uh, when the computers were launched onto the Windows-based system, we had two drives. Uh, these were all floppy drives through which an operating system used to load, known as A drive and B drive. Eventually, after the updation of the computers, uh, things got much more interesting, and now we had a computer which had the inbuilt storage thing uh, in which we can load up our operating system, and hence the C drive came in. And after that, the C drive, uh, which was the first inbuilt uh, drive or 
inbuilt storage that was there in which the operating system was there. Hence the letter, the C actually stuck from there onwards and nobody changed it. So first two drives were A and B, which were removable and the C was inbuilt there. So that's why hence the letter C. Now the important thing is, in the computers, uh, you can only install the operating system onto a primary partition. And you can have, now the usual syntax is you can have uh, three primary partition and one extended partition, and that's the basic rule. Now surely we can have just a one primary partition, install everything on that, that's possible, but the maximum time you're gonna see is three primary partition in which one of them can be active and rest of them are, ex uh, rest one you can have the extended partition. Remember, just one extended partition. This brings us the question that, hey, that means three primary partition and one extended partition. That means I can only have a maximum of four. That's true. But then brings up the question that uh, I have seen many other drives. My friend has got a computer who has got C drive, D drive, E, F, G, H drive. How is that coming up? In order to do so, we need to understand another concept which means a logical drive. So in the early days, there was only the primary partition. But then people realized that we need to have more segmentation of our data so that we can store more data separately into other drives. So once the primary partition is there, after that you see that we have D drive, E drive, and F drive. These are all extended partition and uh, to be honest, these are not separate one. This is just one extended partition. But this one extended partition can be further divided into logical drives. So when I say D drive, it's an extended partition. Yes, it is. E is also extended partition and F is also extended partition. This is just one partition that we are having. But we actually can divide uh, extended partition into logical drives, not the primary partition. It cannot be divided into logical drives. Your extended partition can be divided into logical drives and gives you a kind of a look and feel. It's not actually technically there, but it gives you a feel that yes, you have multiple drives and you can segment your data into multiple ones. So that's the whole story behind that. And always remember that uh, you can have a like max of three primary partition, not max, like you surely can have four primary partition, but the idealist thing, thing is uh, have three primary partition and one extended partition. In the primary partition, you can install the operating system. And at a time, uh, depends of, of course a little bit on the OS and some trickeries that you are doing, but at a given time, only one primary partition can be active. Uh, that means in which your OS is running up. So now that this uh, concept is clear, so if you want to have multiple drives, make sure you format it is using the extended partition and then makes uh, logical drives into that. Now this brings us to another concept that we need to learn about and which is known as MBR, known as master boot record. So what is this master boot record? It is your first sector of the hard drive. Now this master boot record or the first sector in the hard drive is actually responsible for a variety of things and the actual location is cylinder zero, sector zero, head zero and the sector one. That means you can understand it like just the very first thing that is there in your hard drive. So this is where usually your master boot record is. And it is it stores the whole idea about how the partition table is going to look like and what is the bootloader. Inside the bootloader, the further information of where the multiple operating systems are, are actually present. So if you either corrupt your MBR or bootloader, that means you have just lost your path to the operating system. Again, remember the difference between them. Master boot record is the first sec uh, first sector in your hard disk, which stores the information like partition table and bootloader. And bootloader is a file which consists the information of where the other operating system are. If you have just one, that's the information. If you have two or three operating system, that's where that information is. So I know this is like quite a bit, a bit of the talking about uh, these, just the theoretical part. But don't worry, I'll bring up enough of the practical videos as well. Once we understand the theoretical part of MBR and bootloaders, then I'm gonna walk you through that where these bootloaders are into the system so that you can actually see them, can manipulate them a little bit and mess around with the system. So that's it, now you have full knowledge about partitions, tables and all of that. Uh, now we can do a little bit of the practical and we're gonna do some fun stuff of the practical in the next video. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and I'll surely catch you up in the next video.